Many people love forest walks. Fresh air, the whisper of leaves in the wind, bright rays of the sun. Who wouldn't like that, you ask? And I'll answer, me. Horror grips me every time I smell pine in the air. My panic fear of the forest is connected with one incident that I had to endure many years ago. When I was at school, my dad took me to my grandmother's in the village every summer vacation. My grandmother had chickens, geese, a cow, and my favorite gray horse, Sakarox. The village was on the outskirts. The road there took a long time. Grandma allowed me to ride in the forest, with strict orders not to gallop into the thicket. Dad, worried about me, insisted that I stop this activity. They say I bored the horse with constant rides, but Grandma always stood up for me and said that it was even good for Sakharov. She herself could no longer provide the young and frisky horse with the necessary exercise and therefore approved of my walks. Everything was fine until I turned 14. Then I considered myself old enough, broke my grandmother's prohibition for the first time, and went for a walk in the thicket of the forest. On that fateful day, on which my troubles began, I felt a special surge of strength. I had no desire to ride around the village for the hundredth time in a row. So I saddled Sakharov and went to explore the unknown part of the forest. Sakharov constantly straightened his ears and nervously inhaled the air, as if he sensed something very bad nearby. I did not attach any importance to this and thought that the horse was simply worried because he had ended up in an unfamiliar place. With each passing minute, we went deeper and deeper into the thicket. It seemed like a forest. The sun was still there, but I was still overcome by a nagging feeling of anxiety, and I finally understood what was going on. The forest was deathly silent. It was as if all sounds had been turned off on command. I had a distinct feeling that we were being watched. Suddenly, I heard a loud clicking sound. I couldn't determine where exactly it was coming from. The sound seemed to be coming from all sides at once. I became truly scared. I pulled the reins to the side to turn Sakharov and gallop home as quickly as possible, away from this nightmare. But the horse didn't listen. Sakharov nervously stamped his hooves. Every muscle in his body was tense, like a taut bowstring. He straightened his ears and stared somewhere deep into the forest. I followed his gaze. At first, I saw only an impenetrable thicket, but then I looked closer and saw something that made my blood run cold. A deathly pale, bald creature was hiding on all fours behind one of the fir trees. Considering how much it bent its knees and elbows, I can say that it was very tall. If the creature had straightened up, its height would have been at least two meters, although it was unlikely that it could have stood on its feet at all, because its feet were very rounded. The creature's knees were turned in the opposite direction, like those of animals. Its arms and fingers seemed unnaturally long to me. Thick fur grew on the feet and palms of the creature. Even then, it seemed strange to me that, despite the complete calm, this fur was swaying and in different directions. The creature leaned on its fists like a gorilla and looked at us. Its facial features were only vaguely reminiscent of human ones. Black eyes, a wide mouth, and two nostrils without a nose. It did not move. It just sat motionless behind the tree and looked at us. Suddenly, Sugar Winnie turned sharply and rushed back to the house at full gallop. While we were galloping, I heard clicking sounds behind us, but no one was chasing us. I collected all the branches from the trees with my face, but I did not care. When we arrived home, I decided not to say anything to my grandmother, took Sugar to the stall, and gave him something to eat. Evening came. It was time to go to bed. I went to the window to close the curtains and was stunned. Despite the pitch darkness, I still managed to make out that creature. It again looked at me stupidly, but was not going to approach. I was afraid that this creature would approach the house now, but I didn't hear any footsteps. About twenty minutes passed. I carefully got up and looked out the window. The 
creature was still sitting and looking at me, horrified. I sank to the floor, wondering what to do. In the end, I didn't notice how I fell asleep right on the carpet under the window. In the morning, I woke up, and the first thing I did was look out the window. There was no one there. I sighed with relief, changed my clothes, and went to the kitchen to the smell of fresh pies. At breakfast, I realized that I had caught a chill from sleeping on the cold floor. I had a slight fever, a cough, and a runny nose. Horseback riding was out of the question, and, frankly, I was glad about it. I was peacefully basking in the sun, and the devil made me look towards the forest. Behind the trees, that creature was sitting motionless again and staring at me. I was about to panic when suddenly a thought occurred to me. It wasn't attacking me. It was just looking. Maybe screw it. Let it stare. It could have killed me a bunch of times already. But it didn't. So it didn't need it. I pretended that the creature didn't exist and started living as before. From that day on, I kept seeing this creature here and there. Things lasted like this until August, and then the creature suddenly stopped visiting me. The next day, my dad came and took me to the city. A week later, my tearful grandmother called me and said that Sakharok had died. My heart was broken, and in February, my grandmother died of a stroke. Since then, I haven't been to the village for many years. During my studies at the university, it became deserted. The residents moved to the nearest cities, leaving their homes at the mercy of nature. When I turned 26, I succumbed to memories and returned to the village for a day. In one second, the nightmare of the past returned to me with renewed vigor. The memories struck me with an electric shock. In the mirror, I saw this white, bald freak looking at me. He opened his huge mouth, full of long, sharp teeth and made that same clicking sound. Then he rushed towards me. I floored the gas pedal, skidded for a couple of seconds, and sped away from there along an old country road. Suddenly, the freak jumped on the trunk of the car and tried to break the rear window. Luckily for me, a sharp turn appeared in front of me. I have no idea how I managed to perform such a maneuver and miraculously not fly off the road, but I achieved my goal. The creature flew off the car. It tried to catch up with me, but the car reached maximum speed, and I drove away from there. I returned home without incident. Since then, I've not returned to the village. The creatures do not show themselves in any way. Apparently, they remained there in the forest. Although everything ended well, I still shudder at any suggestion to go for a walk in the forest or go out for a barbecue. Friends do not understand my fear, but they do not need to know anything. I remember the horror that I had to endure too well, and I do not want it to be repeated.